Yeah, before we jump into deep learning, let me briefly define what machine learning is and what it is all about in a few minutes. So it all goes back to the traditional programming paradigm. So what do I mean by that? It's like, yeah, the development of computer software to make our lives easier. So I think one of the motivations behind developing software was to make yeah, um, common tasks more convenient. For example, replacing physical mail by, let's say, email, although it's not 100% replaced, but uh, yeah, um, with that like change, now things are a little bit more convenient compared to writing a letter by hand and then bringing it to the post office and then taking a few days until it's delivered and so forth. Email makes this whole communication aspect more convenient. Although I would say maybe uh, email is not so great because everyone, uh, me included, I think, think that email is maybe not making life easier but harder because there's no more email than physical mail. In any case, so uh, let's now imagine you have an email program and you want to make email more convenient. You want to filter out spam, so unwanted email. So imagine you want to design a spam filter. So as a programmer, you want to design the spam filter. So our program is the spam filter. And then we can give this to the computer who then will produce the outputs, which would be the label, whether something is spam or not spam, or maybe going one step uh, further, just putting it into the right folder, like either the inbox or the spam uh, box on our email program. Now, how do we design this filter? I mean, uh, as a programmer, this could be a very tedious exercise. We would first take a look at examples of email. So we would take a look at our inbox and then um, look at what could be some spam email. We would then compare it to non-spam email, think about it and maybe come up with a rule that says, for example, if, let's say, if uh, email has the word, um, let's say, win money or something like that in the subject, then classify it as spam. And then you can have an uh, else if something else and so forth. You can develop these rules, uh, hard code them in your program, and then yeah, develop a spam filter like that. But I think it would be super tedious to do that because you would have to take a look at a lot of messages and do a lot of testing and see if your rule works and if some additional else if statement could improve it and not. And it is like a lot of work like to take a look at this. And this is why machine learning is so yeah popular because it can um, make this life easier for us programmers for developing software that can, for example, classify things. So um, here in contrast at the bottom, I have machine learning in contrast to the traditional programming paradigm. So in machine learning, um, instead of uh, yeah, having the programmer look at these um, inputs and making decisions, we provide the machine learning algorithm with inputs and outputs. Again, outputs would be the labels for our email. So we have a labeled data set. So here this would be our um, emails and the outputs would be whether they are spam or not spam. So a human actually would have to label those. So you have to have a human to assign these labels uh, to show the computer what we want. So it's basically, this is what, what we want, the desira desirable outcome. So we have, as a human, we have to, of course, communicate to the computer what we want. We have to say, okay, we want spam and non-spam email uh, labels. So we provide these as examples and then the computer can learn rules to make this classification. So the computer is actually developing this program. This is our machine learning model. And then the machine learning model can actually replace our role as the programmer developing the program manually. We can actually give the program directly to the computer to produce new outputs on new data. So machine learning is the 
uh, in a way, the automatic learning from examples. So there's also a famous quote by Arthur Samuel. Uh, this is a quote that you can find in almost every machine learning textbook. So the quote goes like this. Machine learning is the field of study that gives computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. So here that means we are providing examples and then the algorithm learns automatically basic from based on the data instead of having humans thinking about these rules that's machine learning in a nutshell specifically this is a subfield of machine learning called supervised learning which i will talk about in a future video so um yeah but you may wonder how is machine learning now related to deep learning and for example, artificial intelligence. You probably all heard about AI and artificial intelligence. Most of the time nowadays, uh, deep learning and AI are used uh, interchangeably. Um, however, there is a distinction I wanted to briefly discuss. So machine learning, I would say, is the biggest field. It's like yeah, um, the field encompassing uh, deep learning. So deep learning is strictly a subfield of machine learning, a subfield that focuses on um, yeah, neural networks, deep neural networks. And AI is uh, intersecting with both. I would say uh, if there's one thing about this graphic um, is I made the this one maybe um, not, I mean, not big enough, but maybe I made this this part here too big. So there is also what I wanted to say here is there are also AI methods that don't use machine learning. So let me um, go through these uh, things step by step. So um, first of all, there are different types of AI. So usually we say uh, generally AI is artificial intelligence, which is a subfield of computer science solving tasks humans are good at. For example, natural language, speech recognition, uh, image recognition, and so forth. Um, and then we can uh, subcategorize AI into two yeah, smaller categories. One is narrow AI, and one is uh, artificial general intelligence. So what is narrow AI? Narrow AI is uh, a form of AI that is focused on solving a particular task. So only one task at a time, for example, image classification or playing a game, driving a car, let's say an algorithm for unlocking your phone. So this would be a narrow AI because it can only do one task. So it's not like a human. A human can do multiple things. I mean, I can yeah, go skiing, I can do cooking, I can write emails, I can um, yeah, record a lecture and things like that. So I can do multiple things, but um, a narrow AI system can only do one thing that it has been developed for. In contrast, artificial general intelligence is a multi-purpose AI, mimic mimicking a human intelligence across multiple tasks. So if you have seen the movie Ex Machina, um, the robot in this movie, for example, I would say would be more like a AGI agent where um, it can do things a human can do. So multiple things, not only classifying images, for example. So in that way, um, there's a difference between narrow AI and AGI. However, AGI is, for most people, what they want to accomplish. This is like the far uh, future goal, but we are not very yeah, close to that one yet. So that's like, uh, people are actually arguing whether it's possible at all, whether it will be possible. Some people think it's like within 50 years. Some people say within 1,000 years. There's actually a nice book. Uh, what was the name? Architects of Intelligence, where um, the author, I think uh, his last name was Ford. I forgot the first name. So the author interviewed multiple experts in deep learning when they would predict uh, AGI will be invented. And there's like a huge... Uh, yeah, huge span of uh, predictions between, I don't know, 20 and uh, uh, twenty years and maybe 10,000 years or maybe never, things like that. So no one really has a good idea even when or if this will ever be invented. Narrow AI is something that we have nowadays in, in almost every aspect of our lives. And I will also talk more about examples of that. So, um, yeah, so why did I do... Uh, 
why did I draw these circles like that? So AI, um, there was also something called good old fashioned AI. It does not always have to involve machine learning. For example, when we developed our spam filter a few slides back, when I de designed these if and else rules as a programmer, I was developing an intelligent system, right? If I add enough of these if and else rules, this th uh, system will be intelligent and will be able to sort my emails by spam and not spam. However, for that, I didn't use machine learning. So in that way, um, AI doesn't always have to use machine learning. Nowadays, most of the AI systems use machine learning though. And uh, also even more of them are using deep learning because deep learning is usually yeah, very good at natural language and uh, computer vision. So, and this is also the focus of this course and this course we will be focusing on deep learning. Uh, regular machine learning that is not deep learning could be for example, generalized linear models, for example, uh, linear logistic regression, tree-based methods, and uh, certain yeah, methods like random forests or uh, gradient boosting, support vector machines, uh, k-nearest neighbors. This is all uh, something we covered in um, machine learning, uh, statistics 451 introduction to machine learning in uh, the fall semester. In this semester, we will be specifically focused on deep learning, which is um, deep neural networks, which are very good at uh, computer vision and natural language, which is something these methods are not good at. So these methods, um, only because we call them traditional, it doesn't mean they are bad. They are still really, really powerful and useful for tabular data. I will explain what I mean by that uh, later. So they are really good at um, learning from tabular data and um, deep learning is more suited for learning from raw data like images and um, speech and uh, things like that. So it's it's not like one is better than the other. The purposes are kind of different. So that's, that's the main difference basically. Um, yeah, so yeah, just one more example of an AI system that does not involve machine learning and deep learning. So as far as I know, I mean, I was a little bit young back then, but as far as I know, Deep Blue, um, that was like a old chess computer, is not based on machine learning. It is like uh, using an alpha beta search, which is yeah a search algorithm for finding um, good chess moves. And as far as I know, for example, this would be an example of a good old fashioned artificial intelligence um, that is not involving machine learning. I may be wrong, but then there are definitely examples of uh, AI systems that don't use um, machine learning. So then in general, we can say AI is uh, yeah a system that employs rules and is kind of intelligent through these rules by using these rules. For example, if you think back of our spam filter that we could develop by hand by having a lot of if and else statements, this can, can become uh, intelligent as a narrow AI, but it doesn't necessarily have to involve machine learning. And yeah, machine learning uh, is about algorithms that learn models or representations or rules automatically from data and examples, the labeled data. For example, if you think back of the slide that I showed you when we showed um, the algorithm examples of labeled email and then the algorithm would develop the program. That would be what machine learning is about. And then deep learning is also machine learning, but it is specifically focused on multi-layer neural networks. So they are a little bit more, yeah, and more complex than uh, simpler algorithms, but not necessarily. They have usually more parameters and we will see all about that in this course. Yeah, here are some uh, applications of machine learning and deep learning in practice. So one we already covered, the email spam detection. Uh, another popular example of machine learning would be, uh, or deep learning in specific, uh, would be fingerprint and face detection and matching on the phone. So if you have a smartphone, you probably either have a fingerprint sensor or a camera that detects your face to unlock your phone. Or web search is also heavily using machine and deep learning, uh, for example, DuckDuckGo, Bing and Google. Um, sports predictions, people use it for making predictions. The, at the post office, uh, also machine learning and deep learning are used for uh, yeah, scanning in the letters, um, the letters on the letters and the zip codes and then categorize yeah, the letters by zip codes like uh, image recognition and handwriting recognition. And the same is true for ATMs, for reading checks. This was actually one of the earliest applications of 
um, deep learning or machine learning. It was a multi-layer neural network, in particular a convolutional neural network, which we will be covering in this course. It was an, uh, called Linnet, and it is, uh, goes back to the 90s, uh, so it's almost 30 years ago. Um, that was one of the early applications of deep learning. I mean, I say deep learning back then, the term deep learning wasn't invented. So back then people called it machine learning, but it was a deep neural network. So here is a fun video. It's a really old video from the 90s, um, yeah, illustrating how this works. So here's a handwritten um, image of a yeah, handwritten digit. And then the machine learning here, uh, machine learning system here recognizes which digit that is. And that can be then used in an ATM, for example, or for sorting the zip codes. So uh, of course we will be developing much more sophisticated systems in these uh, next couple of weeks, but this is I think a yeah, nice nice example of classic deep learning. Um, yeah, uh, other applications include, for example, smart assistants like Apple Siri, like the voice assistant, and also Amazon Alexa, and all these types of voice assistants nowadays all using deep learning. And then yeah, product recommendations if you. Um, no, Netflix or Amazon, they always recommend products based on yeah, machine learning. Self-driving cars, um, unfortunately still not here yet. I mean, not, I'm not sure if it's unfortunate, but yeah, that would be another great application. Well, not application, but at least example of deep learning. It's actually uh, a little bit complicated. So there are many things at work from reinforcement learning to supervised learning with images. So here's like a little example from Waymo. So that would be another area where, where AI, deep learning, machine learning are used, language translation, sentiment analysis, drug design, medical diagnosis, diagnosis and uh, things like that. So I will also, at the end of each week, upload a video that I will call stuff in the news, where I will yeah, highlight some of the recent applications or interesting things in the deep learning world where I will show you way more examples. For example, I'm just thinking of this because when I mentioned uh, medical diagnoses, is, uh, there was like a system recently, a new system for detecting COVID from uh, lung x-rays. There have been lots of these systems lately, but there was a particularly good one, for example, last week in collaboration with um, doctors at NYU. And I will show you more examples of deep learning in the real world in these stuff in the news videos. But yeah, that is just a quick overview of machine learning, um, just to lay the groundwork. And then in the next um, few videos, I will say a little bit more about the subcategories of machine learning. It also applies, of course, to deep learning because we've learned that deep learning is a subcategory of machine learning. And we will also talk more about the workflow and some jargon and then about the tools we'll be using in this course. So this is still all lecture one. And then uh, yeah, I will pause this video here and then uh, record the next one on the broad categories of machine learning.